with the Zen Dudes. I'm your host, Dan. We got our other host, Brandon, out in Los Angeles. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's do this. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Um, Thanks for coming on today. Yeah, I really appreciate you paying for all my expenses and getting me set up here at the uh, Long Beach Hyatt Regency. Uh, Don't worry about it. Zendu Fitness takes care of their people, don't they? Hey, hey, you like that LA hat I got you too? A little gift? You're in LA? <laughs> you know what I mean? Though? We want everyone to know that. That's why we have the LA and the New York hat on, so everyone knows where we are in the world. Dude, maybe, should we just wear, I want to get sponsored by New Era so that we can just wear the city, like hats of whatever city we're in. I like that. Then people like, just know. We don't have to say it. It's like we're in, yeah, hey, we're in New York. So like if we like make a video and there's a thumbnail and someone's like, where are they? Well, just look at our hats and you know. Yes, that could be a thing. I like that. That could be a thing, bro. All right. Um, hey, we got some people from our community who asked questions, and um, I want to answer them. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, guys, the meetups are happening. Venice Beach, it just happened. Just happened. Met. Uh, we had a, there was nine of us. Nice. And just the coolest dudes ever. Just such nice. zen dudes. Nice, dude. That means there's... I'm psyched, man. That's super awesome. I know you have to get going, so I don't want to... I just yeah. want to remind everyone that the Philly meetup is this Wednesday, May 31st, then Boston's June 3rd, then... No, sorry. New York is June 3rd, Saturday. New York, or Boston is June 7th, the following Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? So, check those out on Facebook, Zen Dude Fitness. That's all I have to say, man. Yeah, we'll get those linked up in the description. Yeah. So I'll know when it's going down, because... It is really the most gratifying thing ever to hang out with other Zen dudes. Yeah. Like, what I did yesterday was I went, uh, we all did, like, a real hardcore workout. I was like, what do you guys want to do? Like, I saw them warming up, and, like, all these dudes were, like, badass with jump rope. Like, they were doing crisscrosses, sides, bars, double unders, you name it. Yeah. I was, like, hey. I was like, let's do a workout. And so we went hard, and then we just kicked afterwards. We had some fish tacos. We hung out, like, on the beach. We want to watch people skateboard. They help me. You know, they like, we're part of the vlog. Yeah. It's cool. It's real Dude, cool. that's super fun, man. I like it. I like it, too. Okay. We can get into the question, though. I just wanted to gush a little bit about how happy I am with everyone in our community. Yeah. I feel you, man. I'm, I'm psyched to get out there, bro. I am, oh, my God. I'm, I'm, I got a lot of energy about LA. I'm coming out there. You, you should, because the energy here is. All right. First question. Hit me. Sarah. Sup, dudes. If a lot of weight is lost and a little muscle mass while doing the lean course, what should I do without lifting weights, though? If a lot of weight is lost and a little muscle mass while doing the lean course, what should I do without lifting weights, though? So she's saying she doesn't want to lift weights, um, but I'm assuming she wants to gain a little more mass. So, Dan, do you want to answer that? Like, what would she do if she wanted to maybe, like, put a little bit of that muscle back on? Yeah, I mean, honestly, girl, lift weights. It's just going to be the easiest thing for you to pack on that muscle. I don't know what your reasoning is for not wanting to go. Like, if you just don't want to go to the gym, I get it. But if you're looking for a specific result that requires X, just do X. You know, like you can, yes, you could do a bunch of bodyweight exercises to build mass. That's what Brandon and I are doing right now. But you're going to build more mass. If, you're, if your sole goal is to build muscle, then I would do the thing that's going to get you there faster, which is going to, going to be lifting weights. So if you don't like the current result... I would say, like, if you want to get bigger and grow your mass, like, lifting weights is the most obvious thing to do. Having said that, if you want to still maintain muscle mass and grow a little bit but probably grow slower, do just tons and tons of bodyweight exercises. Push-ups, squats, pull-ups are the main ones that come to my head. Andres asks, I decided to change my feeding time from 4 to 12 because I'm typically at the gym from 9.30 to 11 p.m. What are your all thoughts on that? Is it okay to work out and eat so close to bedtime? Yes, yes, and yes, my friend. Total number, total number of calories and macronutrients, making sure you hit that is always the, the number one priority. When you eat it, doesn't really have anything to do with what you're going to look like. Even eating at night, there are like studies, that's, that's like an old fitness idea. They used to say, like there used to be studies that said if you eat, like carbs at night, you're going to get fat. Totally not true. Your body just cares about the total number of calories and macronutrients on a daily basis. Yeah. I mean, that's some pseudoscience. Yo, that's <laughs> pseudo. Pseudo, man. Pseudo. Yeah. Word. 
Uh, Wolfie is a little pissed because we haven't been answering his question. He keeps asking. Wolfie asks us, why are you guys so awesome? Wolfie. <laughs> Wolfie. <laughs> okay. Let me get... Wolfie. All right. Um, dude, Wolfie, I'm going to go ahead and sort of counter your little question there and ask why you're so awesome. Mm -hmm. That was me yeah. dropping the mic. Yep. Love awesome. you, Wolfie. Love you. I got you. All right, dude, Julia. he is really awesome, man. I just want to say a thank you to Wolfie because he in the dojo and the four-week challenge group makes a bunch of tutorial videos and he's always challenging people. And we like we love that from our community members. So Wolfie is definitely a guy who goes in and goes all out. And that's why he's been getting results and, and continuing to lean his body down. So Wolfie, you're the man. And Wolfie just like he has good energy because he gives. Like a lot of people don't understand how happy you feel when you give love, and Wolfie just gives love all day in the group. She's just helping people, and everyone loves Wolfie because he helps everyone, and she's just like cycle of love and feeling good and yeah. smiling. So, great example. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. Gerardo, what's y'all's favorite sweet cheat? Something that you won't share? Something like a cake, a bread, ice cream, candy, fruit? Dude, I just ate it. I just ate it, bro. Uh, really warm apple pie heated up in the microwave with vanilla bean ice cream on top of it. Just, Ooh. oh my God. Y'all had two pieces, two big pieces. It's That's Memorial Day here. It's Memorial Day here in the U.S. So, I'm, uh, I had a little cheat day today. It was fantastic. Hell yeah. So, Gerardo, mine is carrot cake. And a nice, dense carrot cake that has a good amount of frosting, but... The, the dough of the cake is not just whatever. The dough has a lot of flavor as well. So the, the frosting and the dough, is it dough? The, the not, whatever is not frosting. What would we call that? Yeah, just, is that Lots just called cake? cake? I think it's, I think that is the cake. Okay. So the cake has to have a lot of flavor. I love carrot cake. Moving on. James asks. Brandon, how do you keep the man bun healthy? Seems to get a lot of unhealthy ends for twisting it over and do the hair thing. Wow, James, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> dude, show him. Show him. My, dude, I got, my hair don't look very good right now because I'm wearing a hat. And then where I went, when I wear a hat, it kind of pushes my hair back. It makes it look like a receding hairline a little bit. Um, so let me talk to you about the bun really quick. Bun. Wow. Yo, Medusa. Medusa Omlingata. <laughs> All right. So, my man, I actually don't know because my girlfriend is just giving me shit for um, not knowing how to, like, deal with my man bun. I, I, I wash it with shampoo probably once a week because if I wash it too frequently, it gets too uh, uh, straw-like, you know? It's yeah, not a nice texture. Yeah, you don't want uh, that. Alex asks, two quick questions about the macro calculator. The web, it gives me 45% carbs, 35% fat, 25% protein. But in a simple meal system, I read that for endomorphs, it should be more like low carbs, high fat, high protein. What should I do? Got you, bro. So listen, man. The calculator is going to give you, um, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, we don't have like ectomorph and like body type built into the calculator. The calculator is just going to give you your percentages, and then the balance, if you're an ectomorph, that's when you go to the simple meal system and you can adjust your macros based off those numbers. So for example, if you are, first of all, I would say, don't worry too much about this because if you're eating calories, like the right amount of calories, whether you're at like 50% carbs or 40% carbs, I promise you is not gonna make a huge difference in the grand scheme of things as long as you're hitting those calories. Um, but I would say, dude, is if you see that, and it, it doesn't match the simple meal system, like what you would get for what is it, endomorph, then plug, then change your numbers to meet, like keep the same calorie count, but change the ratios of carbs to fats to proteins um, to make it meet that of an endomorph. So that, yeah. I just want to throw a rough example. That might be like lowering carbs by 10, raising fat by 10. Um, the simple meal system should tell you how to do that though. And I would also add, like, a lot of people don't know what to do, like, if they just follow the numbers in the calculator, and after, like, a certain amount of time, it plateaus. It might not be a bad idea, Alex. Like, if you've seen results for a while with the exact numbers the calculator gives you, like, be following the suggestions of the simple meal system may be a great thing to do once you do see a plateau, because then you know how to adjust. 
Um, cause we always talk about like do the minimal amount of like kind of work that you have to do until like you hit a wall and then you can like add a little bit more and you're adding a little more would be like refining your macronutrient distribution based upon your, your body type. Yeah. For sure. For sure. All right. Shannon, I'm wondering if you guys can make a video about stretching post-workout, not so much an ask as any question, just a request. Um, yeah, you know what we should do? Maybe Dan or myself will, uh, we'll do a vlog one day. We'll just do like a stretching routine that you guys can, can follow. Do I don't mind doing that. I do, I do some stretching and some, some working out my body before I jump, before I do the thing. So I'm happy to show that. I did post it in the, uh, the group the other day, but I can do like a more extensive video on that. Here, or, I'm writing it down, Shannon. I am taking it as a note. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> You best believe I'm taking a note. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. On to the four-week challengers, Samson asks, <clears throat> how do I transition from counting calories to estimating macro-fulfilling meals? In parentheses, I've reached an ideal weight. I just want to maintain it now. Mm. Okay, can you ask that one more time? He wants to transition from counting calories to being able to estimate, like, how much he should be eating, like, Throughout the day, um, these are just the weight that he wants to be. Yeah, dude, this is very. This process is very simple. So, the the only reason you're tracking your calories and macros, and it talks about this in the simple meal system in our in our dojo, uh, and that is linked up below, by the way. The only reason that you're tracking your calories and macros in the first place is because you want to you want to be more self aware and repeat meals. The whole goal of of tracking calories and macros is to find about 20 meals that you love and just repeat them because then you know the, the calorie and macronutrient ratio. Like when I go to a restaurant now, I know that a bacon cheeseburger and fries is about somewhere between like, you know, 750 to like 950 calories. And I know that it's like somewhere between 35 grams of protein to like maybe 55 grams of protein. I know that can seem like a big difference. But what my point is that you just need to find meals that you want to repeat and so when you eat them at multiple different places or make it at home, it's still within this same calorie range. Be sure to check out the simple meal system. If you haven't, that's also linked up below. The simple meal system tells you like ranges um, of the meal because it's not actually very accurate to say like this meal has 610 calories and blah, blah, blah. Like unless you make it perfectly every time. So there's like meal ranges in there. And once you build that self-awareness, that's how you can transition to just looking at food and being like, all right. There's 700 calories, there's my 800, and there's my remaining 700. Lawrence has said, yo, how do you stay motivated and work out while dealing with school at the same time? Then he just said a bunch of stuff around, like, it's hard for me to focus on both things. This is actually a question we get a lot from younger dudes yep. in yep. high school and college. And, uh, Dan, I'll let you start with this, and then um, I'll, I'll hit you up, Lawrence. I'll, I'll just answer it short and let you take this, because, dude, I would just say habit. It's got to be a habit, man. It doesn't matter if you're in school because guess what happens after school? You start working. You know, there's never going to be any a time in your life where you just have free time that you can choose the perfect time to work out every day. My, my thing, man, would be start a habit, even if that's starting with like 10 minutes a day of jump rope, just so you build this habit of doing the thing every day. Brandon, what would you say? Yeah, I mean, dude, just piggyback on that. Like, you just have to um, make it a non-negotiable for your life. Like, it's one of those things that need to become the same as, like, brushing your teeth every day or taking a shower. Like, I'm sure you just do it. I mean, actually, maybe a shower is, like, a great example. Like, you know, uh, I'm, like, a pretty clean guy. I shower just about every day. But some, once in a while, a day goes by and I don't uh, shower. And working out is very similar to that for me now. Like, I just have to get it in. I get it in every day. And if, like for whatever reason, like, I don't get it in, like, I get in the next day. And it's just, like, something that's so ingrained into my routine that it's a non-negotiable for my life. Like, it's not like, oh, am I going to do it today? It's just like, of course I'm going to do it, just like, of course I'm going to shower. Also, so. dude, if, if you're feeling stressed, like, you have to work out. Like, if you, the way to be, like, be happier and, like, if you're feeling stressed because you have all this stuff, like, what's that saying? When you're the busiest, that's when it's time to exercise because, by just working out for 30 minutes, you're going to be able to deal with all the, the you're going to be able to deal better with your busy life. Yeah. I think there was like a Zen, a Zen Buddhism quote that was like, if you don't have 20 minutes to meditate every day, then meditate for an hour. 
And I feel like the same goes for, like, working out. If you don't have 20 minutes to exercise in a day, then, like, maybe you should be sitting off an hour to go exercise and just give yourself more self-care. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. All right, Omar. Omar? Oh, what? What do you? I just said Omar. 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 <laughs> it says it's Ramadan. Ramadan in his country. So the question is, of course, what's a perfect time to jump rope before or after eating? Now, this is going to be a little different. Dan, I will leave this just because this is a little different than most fasting questions. Because like with Ramadan, like they're not like drink water or eat. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And that worries me just a little bit about, like, someone, like, not having any water intake. I'm worried. Or, I'm worried. What was that? I'm worried. Yeah. Or food until after the sun goes down. Usually, if you're, like, legit and you're really following the program, I think it's supposed to be pitch black outside, which should be pretty late at night. So, I would actually say, like, if you can, um, either do it. Before the sun rises, breakfast before the sun comes up, maybe get up even earlier and like do a morning workout and then eat and then you can do the fast for the rest of the day or in the evening, um, maybe right after you eat, a couple hours after you eat. So that, that, that's my suggestion. Cool. Cool. Amitesh says, I observed substantial body fat reduction when I first started my jumper workout. However, since the last two or three weeks, I seem to have plateaued out. How do I overcome this? case of results over time. Oh. He's talking about just a plateau? Yeah. And, um, I mean, my knee-jerk reaction is, like, what's going on with your nutrition? Are you Dude, it's always, a rope? But, damn, I mean, what, what... It's always nutrition. I feel like it's always nutrition. You have to, like, you really seriously have to ask yourself, am I hitting my calories and macros Every single day, because if you don't if you don't track that, that is the biggest contributing factor to how you're going to look. And if you're not paying attention to that, like your body's just on this roller coaster of it, it doesn't know what's going on in it. It doesn't know like if it should lose weight, gain weight, and so it just goes in this like you know up and down, up and down phase. Did you slow? Did you just slow your seat. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. Bro, get your nutrition on point. Because he was probably, I'm, I'm attached, I'm assuming you were really pumped that, like, you started jumping rope, and you're losing body fat, and you didn't change anything else, you're like, this is pretty easy. Well, then the next step is just, just get your nutrition on point and eat that. Gurge, jeez, ass, what are the challenges faced during your transformation? What are the challenges you face undergoing your transformation? Um, not being consistent. People give up. Not because they can't do the work or they can't eat right. It's because they don't take small actions on a daily basis. And so they, they, they're not consistent. I think the biggest struggle that people have is they don't do something for long enough to see it through to the result. Ladies and gentlemen, to let you know really quick, you're probably like, why is it dark out? And why do Brandon and Dan have different shirts on even though we have with the same hats? Well, ladies and gentlemen... That's because we got disconnected because the internet at my parents' house is not the best. It's not internet. The best. Darn it. Yeah. So we're gonna we're we're back now. We're back. We're gonna finish we up because we finish stuff. We're finishers. Okay. We're finishers. Every time. That's right. No matter man. what. Even if there's a fire. Dude, we will finish and you know what? If the fire's not totally finished, we'll finish the fire. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pee on it. <laughs> exactly, man. Kabir asks, when does the body lose muscle? What exactly is the science behind muscle loss? Does it have anything to do with macros? Great question. I love these kind of questions. Dan, I'll let you leave. Yeah, I think it, it does have to do with macronutrients. So basically, um, when you the short science of it is when you don't feed your muscles properly, um, they look to your body looks to get energy from certain places. And instead of turning to your body's fat stores, your body basically goes to your muscle and says, well... I could use some energy, so I'm going to take some of your muscle so that you don't die. So that it's is the catabolism. catabolism, that's right. And that's, yeah. uh, that's the science of it right there. Yeah, so that's why you want to get your protein, Kabir. Get your protein, get your macros, use a calculator, get your protein. Yeah, the body's, I mean, just real quick, like the body's just a bunch of atoms made up of things that like 
Like the way I think about if you're a certain size and you want to maintain that size, your body is constantly either losing weight, um, gaining weight, gaining muscle, losing muscle. So like your body has to have a certain level of substance each day, substance being calories, macronutrients, a certain level of protein in order for you to stay in that same shape. If you start eating less, it is kind of logical that your body's going to get smaller because of it and you're going to lose muscle. So Tavanesh asks, how does sleep play a role in keeping fit or achieving the Zen state? Well, a big thing is like when you don't sleep enough, your, your hormones get out of balance, right? Like your cortisol is going to go up and cortisol is like the stress hormone. And when your cortisol is up a ton, it could actually help. It could lead to catabolism. The thing we were just talking about of like muscles getting eaten away. Um, you know, your, your leptin secretion can be messed up, which is your hormone that, uh, controls your, your metabolism. And so a lot of your hormones get out of funk when you don't sleep enough. And when that happens, you're more likely to put on more body fat and lose muscle mass. So that's why it's so important to figure out what is a good amount of sleep for you personally. We've talked about this in past Ask the Zen Dues, but uh, just to reiterate really quick, you just have to find that out for yourself. Some people need five, some people need 10. Uh, it's self-experimentation. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. Bart asks, does intermittent fasting cause pimples? I'm 47 years old. I've never had an issue with pimples. I recently incorporated IF in my lifestyle. I'm experiencing acne like a prepubescent teen. No. Intermittent fasting does not cause acne, dude. Something else is responsible for that. And I just, I don't think that changing the way in which you eat, like you're still, you're no, there's no diet here. There's nothing, intermittent fasting doesn't really do a whole lot that would cause your body to break out in pimples. If you're not taking care of your body or if you're working out and then you're keeping your smelly shirts on and then, you know, I get, dude, I, my back breaks out because sometimes I work out and then I come home and I sit around and edit video for three hours instead of getting in the shower and that sometimes causes pimples. You know, some pimples. But I really don't think, I can't like direct you to an article that says intermittent fasting definitely does not cause pimples or acne, but I highly, I do not think at all that that has anything to do with pimples, to be honest with you. What's, what do you think, man? Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, I know that for different testosterone therapies, like some of the protocol is the intermittent fasting because it, it has like a correlation with helping improve testosterone. Um, but I don't think it's dramatic enough to give you acne. You know, like if you're going to take a, a cycle of steroids, then like that's where the acne comes in. But I think the IF, like it'll give you a small boost, which shouldn't create like as much a hormone shock to create acne. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. All right. Vegeet asks, can you jump rope after getting a new tattoo? I got mine yesterday, so can I jump rope? Um, my dude, I hope it was a do the thing tattoo. If it was, tag us on Instagram so we can check that out. Yeah, for sure. I think you could, by the way. I think lifting weights is different. Like for example, the uh, let me put it this way. When you get a tattoo, the best thing in the world you can do is probably not exercise at all. Like if we're talking like the top person the top tattoo artist would probably tell you, dude, just don't exercise. Don't put it in water. Just put coconut oil on it or some kind of ointment and let it heal. Having said that, me being realistic, like I didn't fully stop working out when I, whenever I get tattoos. But what I don't usually do is like this one was on my forearm. So like I won't do pull-ups because that stretches it out. If I'm just doing a little bit of jump rope, I'll let that slide. Or if I'm just like going on a super long walk, I'll let that slide. Um, I think you're fine to jump rope, dude, as long as you're taking care of it, as long as you're applying ointment to it, as long as you're cleaning it, dude, clean your tattoo. That's clean a big it. thing. That's, that's what would be my suggestion. Uh, Rahul, Rahul asks, how to perfectly rule a joint? I guess we can't really answer that question, but, uh, <laughs> we've never smoked weed before. <laughs> Alpha asks, any thoughts on incorporating backwards jumping with the transition from forwards into a routine? He wants to do backwards jumping rope mm. followed by frontwards jumping rope in a routine. I think he's just saying, um, can I do backwards jump rope and in my routine? And he wants some guidance with, the, with this. I'm not, dude, I need to work on that. I think we should do, man, when I get to LA, let's get the XL rope out and let's just like have skill practice every day where we practice the, uh, you know, our skills. I saw you on there murdering that little cross. Oh, no, I'm not done crossing. You know, that was cool. Oh, 
my this dude Eric at the Zendu Fitness Meetup at Venice Beach taught me how to jump rope like through one of my legs. Really? And I got down. It's like Wait. a side swipe through your legs, which is dope. I'll have to, I'm gonna make a video on it. Do that. Make that video, man. Hell yeah. Make it. Nice. Anyhow, um, I think what we're saying is uh, we don't do backwards jump rope that much, and we're gonna start practicing, and we'll we'll incorporate it into a workout at some point. Yeah, we promise. Promise, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, Alphon asked, what exercise is better to get a six pack? A plank, crunches, or sit ups? Players? Dude, I don't think any of those, to be honest with you. But I'm a, I'm a fan of, like, if we're talking research and stuff, there's research behind why planks are beneficial, like just locking your body in for like a minute, two minutes, three minutes. Like, that, that can be super beneficial. I'm personally someone who, if I'm going to work my abs, I believe that like you should work your lower abs because that's really the biggest area that people want to see. Like I feel like fat comes off your upper abs first, and so I've gotten better results for my own body by training my lower abs only. So doing leg raises, that's my that's my go to. Um, yeah, I'm a big leg raise guy. So that would be that would be, if you if you want my like favorite ab exercise that I think is super beneficial. I would say leg raises and then plank after that. That would be mine. And I was doing leg raises with a barbell with weights on the side. Oh. It's just like leg raises, but just way harder. Yeah. And I felt a lot of thickness adding on to my, my turtle shell on my stomach. Ah, nice. If you want to get wild, Alphon, throw it in there. Do it. Do it, Alphon. All right, Arena asks, is it normal not to sweat during intense HIIT workout? Um, I mean, I know that, like, for example, this isn't like I know some girls who sweat a lot, so I'm not saying it's just women versus men, but, like, I've, I've seen, like, girls go through intense workouts and they don't sweat as much as, like, I sweat like a pig, to be honest with yeah. you. Dude, um, Sarah and I did a workout today. I was drenched. She didn't sweat at all. So, And we did the same workout. Yeah, so I don't I don't know necessarily though that um, that is a I think you can still go go really intense and get a great workout and not sweat buckets like someone like Brandon or I would. Yeah, yeah. but you can't get those buckets. Buckets. Yeah, but also try to make yourself sweat. Like maybe it's also because you're not pushing yourself hard enough. And we always talk about you have to push yourself to 110 percent. So do that. 120 impossible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe 125. I don't know. Get crazy. I don't care. Yo, shout out to the homies over at Crossrope. They have the jump rope that you see in our Instagram stories, you see in our YouTube videos, you see on our Facebook page. It's a jump rope we always use. We recommend you get 10% off when you click the link in the description of this YouTube video. Or if you're listening to the podcast, just go to crossrope.com forward slash Zen Fitness. Um, and also holler at our boys, Athletic Greens. They got some great uh, greens product, protein, uh, a lot of goodies that are uh, grass fed and just high quality. So if you want to check them out, again, we linked them in the YouTube video below. Get a little discount on a bundle we have for you guys. And if you're listening to this, athleticgreens.com forward slash Zen Dude Fitness. Check them out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to episode number 17. Can't wait to see you guys on next week week's episode. I'm going to be in New York City. I'll be in New York City. Woo! Are you going to be in Oregon? Next. Uh, I get into Oregon on Friday, so um, depends when we do that episode. But yeah, probably. I'll probably be in Oregon. Cool. Awesome, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for another one, and we'll see you on the next Ask the Zen Dudes. Ow.